Good day, everyone. I hope you've had a blessed week. Uh, I think every week's a blessed week. Some are just, as my English teacher would have said, some weeks are just more blesseder than others. And uh, we're still fighting the, the virus. More people are getting it, being more people tested. We need to, to pray harder and harder be persistent in our prayers for the needs of others. Today is November the 11th, Veterans Day. And I want to challenge you, if you have a member of your family or a neighbor or uh, a friend that has served, uh, walk across the yard and tell that person that you appreciate their service. Uh, call someone, tell them that you appreciate their service that they gave a portion of their lives that we may continue to have our freedoms. Uh, it's, it's a day that we should see as a special day uh, as we are citizens of a, of a great nation and uh, God has blessed us and we need to pray continually uh, for our leaders. Uh, we need to pray for, I think, not only that our leaders will make right decisions, but uh, probably first and foremost, if they don't know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, we need to pray for their salvations. And that in itself could turn this country around, get us back on the road that we should be on. Uh, you know, if my people that are called by my name will they humble themselves and pray, uh, you know, the Lord will heal our land, and we need to, we need to do that. Um, we need to be persistent in our prayers. Not only praying for our personal needs, praying for uh, those that are sick, family members that have had illnesses, accidents, whatever it may be, uh, but never forget to pray for our country and for our leaders and pray that revival breaks out in our leaderships. I want to start uh, today with a teaching that I've done uh, past years. Uh, I want to resurrect it a little bit. And uh, I think the time that we're living, uh, all the turmoil that's going on, all the confusion, uh, the rioting, uh, and I believe that the return of Christ is imminent. Not just that it's getting close, but I personally believe that it's imminent. Uh, I'm not the only one that feels that way. There are many that feel that way. And who's coming for the church? Our Savior, our Lord, Jesus the Christ, our Messiah. Jesus, who is he? That's one question. Who is Jesus? If I were to ask you and you were able to answer that question, some would say, well, he's the Son of God. He's the Christ. He's our Messiah. He's the light of the world. And we could go through a listings of different names, adjectives that describe who Jesus is. Who is he to you? Right now you may be going through something, you may be going through an illness, and you're looking to Jesus as being your healer, your comforter. He is that. He is that. Who is Jesus? That's one question. Then another question that has to follow right close behind. Do you know him? Who is Jesus? Do you know him? Do you know Jesus the Christ? I mean, do you really know him? You may know who he is. You may know some things about him but do you really know him? You know, 
somebody may walk up to you and say, uh, do you know Pastor Wayne? Uh, Pastor Wayne Booth, one of the pastors at Genoa? Uh, well, yeah, I know him. Uh, I've sat in his Bible study. Uh, I've attended church with him. How do you know him? Well, I went to school with him. Uh, of course, many, many years ago. We went to high school together. Uh, but today, do they really know me? They know me as someone that they went to high school with. Somebody in the community may know me as uh, when I ran Boost General Sales down at Old Three and Big Walnut Road. Others may know me as, as I was for a while, a Genoa chaplain for the township. Uh, some may know me uh, when I ran the Action Tool Rental as the man that, that rented tools. Then there's my family, my great-grandchildren. They know me as their great-grandfather. My grandchildren know me as their grandfather. My kids know me as, as dad. Pappy. My wife knows me as her husband. And they all know me better than people of the community. How do we know Jesus? You know, one of the things that I have uh, tried to do the last Oh, two or three years. When I end a prayer or when I talk about Jesus, most always I refer to Jesus as the Christ, our Messiah. When I end a prayer, I end a prayer many times in the name of Jesus, the Christ, our Messiah. And that's who He is. He is Jesus. His name was given to be Jesus. He is the Christ, the anointed one that was prophesied throughout the Old Testament to be the Messiah, the Savior, the Redeemer. How do we know him personally? What kind of a personal relationship do we have? And I think many times that we need to go back to the basics. We need to start from the beginning. And, uh, you know, in uh, Matthew chapter 16, Jesus comes to his beloved apostles. And in verse 13, now when Jesus went into the region of Caesarea, Philippi, into a Gentile area, an area that is a little more secluded, an area that, that he would be able not to be pressed upon as much as other areas that he ministered in, that he could take his apostles, his close-knit group, and minister to them, teach them. And here he asks, a very important question. He asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Referring to himself. Who does the community say that I am? Who do they think that I might be? What's the rumors that you're, that you're hearing as you walk the streets? What are people saying? And they answered, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. Others Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. People of the communities recognized that Jesus was special. Something about him. I mean, he taught with authority. He confounded the rabbis the Pharisees, the Sadducees. He had authority when he spoke. But he had a gentleness also 
when he spoke. He spoke boldly with authority, but he also spoke with gentleness, with love, with compassion. And then he performed miracles. He had power. He had authority that community had never been accustomed to. Heard about, read about in the Old Testament, heard about John the Baptist, heard about Elijah, heard about Jeremiah. But here's one that they're, they're seeing and hearing. He must be cut of that cloth. And then he says to his disciples, But who do you, you that are here with me right now, those that have been chosen, those that have followed me, those that have walked with me many miles, those that have ate with me, those that have sat at my feet and heard me teach. You've seen miracles performed. The community, the community has said, these things. They recognize that I'm something special. But who do you say that I am? And bold Peter, bold Peter spoke up very quickly. And he said, you, and uh, I, I kind of visualize Peter sitting there and taking a, a good strong setup and a stance and, and pointed to Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. What a profession. Looking at Jesus and saying, I believe. The community says one thing, I hear what they say, but I believe and we in this circle believe you are the Christ, the anointed one, the one that we have read about in the Old Testament to come to this earth. And the things that you have told us about yourself, we believe. We believe that you are the Christ, the son, the literal son of the living God. Then Jesus answered him, blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood, men, have not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Through the Holy Spirit, God Almighty has revealed to Peter. Through Jesus Christ and being there firsthand with Jesus and hearing his teachings, seeing the miracles that he's done. And Peter became open to receive something very special. That God himself through the Holy Spirit revealed the true identity of this person. This Jesus was more than just a person born of Mary. That he is the incarnate the deity, the Christ that has always been, came to this earth to become human. Human and deity in one being. And Christ goes on, he says, and I tell you, you are Peter, a piece of the rock. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Haiti and the powers of the infernal region shall not overpower it or be strong to its demise or hold out against it. This knowledge that you have, Peter, a rock, a part of the big rock, and this knowledge I will build my church. Or he may have, may have, when he said, upon this, I'll build, he may have said, and pointing back to himself, 
this knowledge you have, that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. On this, I will build my church. This knowledge that you have of who I am, I will build the church. Oh, how important it is that we take that same knowledge that Peter had to know that we know that we know that Jesus is the Christ. You know, I have said, and I've heard people say, I've heard other pastors say, Jesus has always existed. And I understand what they're saying, but reality is, that's not entirely true. The Christ has always existed. But Jesus didn't exist until the Christ came and became born as Jesus the Christ. The Christ has always existed. Uh, if we look in Genesis at the very beginning, in Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And the darkness was upon the face of the earth. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God and then the Spirit. And then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God said, God spoke words and spoke the words of light into existence. And then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the water and let it divide the waters from the, from the waters. God spoke and land was formed. God spoke the word and land was formed. Verse 9, And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let dry land appear. And it was so. And then verse 11, God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, and the herbs yielding seeds, and the fruit trees yielding fruit. God said, God spoke the words. Now, let's look in John John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word. And I want to read from the Amplified because it, it says it and explains, I think, in great detail. In the beginning, before all time, was the Word, Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God Himself. And He was pressed originally with God. Present. He was present originally with God. And all things were made and came into existence through Him. And without Him was not even one thing made that has come into being. And in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines on in the darkness, for the darkness has never overpowered it, put it out, or has not uh, absorbed it, has not appropriated it, and it is unreceptive to it. There came a man sent from God, whose name was John. And this man came to witness that he might testify of the light and all men might believe in it, adhere to it, trust in it, and rely upon it through him. He was not the light himself, but came that he might bear witness regarding the light. There it was, the true light, was then coming into the world, the genuine, perfect, steadfast light that illuminates every person. 
that illuminates every person. He came into the world, and through the world was made through him, and the world did not recognize him, did not know him. He came to that which belonged to him, to his own dominion, creation, things, world, that they who were his own did not receive him and did not welcome him. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority, the power, the privilege, the right to be the children of God. That is, to those who believe in and adhere to and trust in and rely on his name. Who owe their birth neither to the bloods or to the will of the flesh, that of physical impulse, or to the will of man, that of a natural father, but to God. They are born of God. And the Word, Christ, became flesh. Jesus, the Christ, human, incarnate, lived a while among us, and we actually saw his glory, his honor, his majesty, such glory as only begotten Son receives from his Father, full of grace, favor, loving kindness, and truth. Boy, that says so much. And I want to challenge you uh, after this lesson today to go back and read John chapter 1. It is full of so many faith-building things about Jesus. Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Son of God. Jesus being the Word. Jesus being the light. And there it's, it repeatedly spoke of the Word being the light. And if we we'll look also in John chapter 8, Verse 12, we read that Jesus himself says this. Uh, once more, Jesus addressed the crowd, and he said, Jesus the Christ, our Messiah, spoke these words. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the dark but will have the light which is life. Not only the light of the world, but that light of the world is the light of life. Who is Jesus? Who is he? Well, as Peter said, you are Christ, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then he is the word that has always existed. Christ has always been. I know Jesus as being the Christ that has always existed. The word has always existed. The word was with God in the beginning. Has always been. And it created. And it's the light. He is the light the light of this world, and he's the light of life, that light that gives us eternal life. Oh, how, how truly important that is. And Genesis 1, 26, God said, let us make man in our image. Adam and Eve, you and I, are created in the image of God. Now, that doesn't mean that I look like God, doesn't mean that you look like God. But we are created in a being, a human being that has body, has form, has a soul, has a spirit, has a mind. We have choice, and we can choose to learn more about Jesus 
or you can choose not to. That's your choice, that's my choice. And when I think about what may be very close on our horizon of Jesus Christ coming to this earth, the one that I had asked forgiveness of my sins and asked him to come into my life to be my Lord and my Savior, to think that he may be here soon and very soon. And to think that, well, I, I know he's my Savior. I know he's the Christ. But I don't know that much about him. Oh, I want to know so much about him. I want to know all I can gain knowledge-wise to know him when, when he comes to take his church away, that he knows that I know him, that I have an intimate, personal relationship. And I know him not just from a distance. I don't know him as some people know me, just, just a little part of me. I'm part of his family. I need to know as much about him as I can. And that's what I want to challenge you, to get to know him just as much as you can. And, uh, you know, the Bible is full of things about Jesus. Even in the Old Testament, if we look in uh, uh, Exodus 33, uh, and then, what was it? Uh, 20. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall be no man see me and, and live. And the Lord said, Behold. There is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in a cleft of the rock and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. I will take away my hand and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face ye shall not see. Scripture tells us in, uh, uh, that we cannot see the face of God and live. And yet, there's indications of people that have had an experience. But what have they had an experience with in the Old Testament? Uh, if we look at uh, Genesis uh, 14, back to Genesis. Fourteen, and what did I have wrote down there? Uh, Eighteen. And Melchizedek, Abraham had fought a great battle and had been victorious. God had been with him. And God blessed Abraham in the battle and was victorious. And then as he comes out of that battle victorious, he meets an individual. And Melchizedek, King of Salem brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said to Abraham, of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which delivered thy enemy unto thy hands. And he gave him a tithe of all the spoils. The first recorded tithing in the Bible was Abraham giving a tithe to Melchizedek, a high priest. And then if we look at Hebrew, uh, Hebrews chapter 7, starting with verse 1. For this Melchizedek, 
king of Salem, high priest of the Most High God, met Abraham as he returned from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth portion of all the spoil. He is primarily, as his name then translated, indicates king of righteousness. And then he is also king of Salem, which means king of peace. Jesus Christ is the prince of peace. Jesus Christ is the righteous one. Jesus Christ is the son of righteousness. Without record, this Melchizedek, this high priest, who is without record of father or mother, or ancestral line, nor with beginning of days or ending of life, but resembling the Son of God, he continues to be a priest without interruption and without successor. There is a terminology that is used in the Old Testament. It is Christophany. Christophany means that there was an appearance of Christ in the Old Testament. Christ that had taken on human form. Not an incarnate at this time, that he just took on human form and made appearances in the Old Testament. Christ who represents God. Christ who, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the three in one. Christophanies, the appearances of deity in the Old Testament, many times was probably a Christophany, as Melchizedek was apparently a Christophany. Christ appearing in human form, appearing to take on the priest of Melchizedek. Uh, so, who is Jesus? Well, he's the Christ. He's the Messiah. And because that incarnate of Christ into human form, actual incarnate, he was able to walk this earth and become human and he hungered as we hunger. He thirsted as we thirst. He got tired and sleepy as we get tired and sleepy. He literally became human. Not just took on human form as he did in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, he was the incarnate, born of the Virgin Mary into human form. Uh, and we'll close with this. And again in Hebrews, Hebrews 13, 2. It says, do not forget. Back up to one. Let love of your fellow believers continue and be a fixed practice with you. Never let it fail. Never let the love of others fail in how you react to other individuals. Do not forget or neglect or refuse to extend hospitality to strangers in the brotherhood. Being friendly, cordial, gracious, sharing and comforts of your home and doing your part generously. For though it's but through it, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Angels have appeared, both Old Testament and New Testament, in human form. Angels aren't human. Angels were not incarnate. They just were able to take on human form and came. Gabriel appeared to be a human but he was an angel. And there were angels that appeared to be soldiers, military, that fought battles. But they weren't human. They weren't incarnated. They just was. And the Christophanies of the Old Testament 
or was Christ just taking on human form, but then in the New Testament, he became the incarnate, the Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, who is he? He is so many things. And do you know him? Do you really know him? I want to challenge you as we go through uh, this teaching. Uh, we'll continue on next week and we'll get into some more things about who Jesus really is. But we have to start with the strong basics of Jesus being the incarnate, the incarnate of Christ, being Jesus to Christ. And because he is Jesus to Christ, he is the Messiah that has been prophesied throughout the Old Testament to be our Savior, Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, Jesus, the Savior, Jesus, the Christophany of Melchizedek, a high priest. And Jesus, of course, today, is that high priest who is seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven, praying and interceding for us. We, we come to God through Jesus. And how very important that is. Next week we'll pick up on that. Our gracious, gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this day seeking your guidance, your direction, your strength, your grace, your mercy. And Lord, we're thankful for the love that you have for us, that you bestow upon us, that that love, not only that love that we receive and fills us, but Lord, may it not only fill us, but may it overflow through us, that we may share that love to others, that we may share in a new way, a powerful way, the love that you have for us because of who you are. May we grasp even more so today than ever before and the days to come to have a greater and more powerful and more intimate relationship with you as we learn truly who you are in so many th ways and so many things that we can flow it through our being, through our minds, through our voices, through our actions, that we can show individuals, other people, your love and who you truly are. We pray this in your precious name, Lord Jesus, you who are the Christ, our Messiah. Amen.